The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good morning, folks. Welcome to the November 17th, the fantastic Friday edition of today's Trader's Edge show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes, who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. And yeah, let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. Now, the easiest way to do that is to always remember that life is happening for us, not to us. That's right. When you and I make that one little two by four shift, it means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. Now, today, you and I, we're going to go check on the circumstance of these markets. We'll go figure out what those bulls and bears, what those buyers and sellers are communicating to you and I at just past 11 o'clock in the morning. I want you to know I'm absolutely grateful for your presence here. But even more important than that, and that's this, during this next 53 minutes, I am here to serve you. So feel free to pick up that phone. You can dial on in at 877-927-6648. Now, if you've got a question but you can't dial in, you can send me an email. Send that off to steve at tfn.com. And inside the subject heading, please put radio show question. And, of course, if you're inside our Tiger's Den, well, then any and every ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on fabulous Friday. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to the show. Right now, we got a mixed bag out there. The mix goes like this. Dow's trading down 44 points. About one tenth of a percent. Same for the S and P, which is six points. Four tenths for the Nasdaq 100. 61 points there. Russell's up by over one percent. A 21 point move there. Quarter percent move to the downside in the semis. That's off nine. Trinity's up 101. New York Stock Exchange up 67. Gold is flat, trading out at 1986. Silver's off 10 cents at 2383. Lights Recruit is up two bucks at 7515. Natural gas off 12 cents to 30 year Treasury. Printed out at 11504. That is down six ticks. Leading the charge dollar wise to the upside, it is Globant SA up 10 percent, 19 bucks. Broadcom is up 10 bucks, 1 percent. Ross Stores is up 8 percent, 10 bucks. Hubble is up eight and change. That's a 3 percent move in Palo Alto Networks up six dollars and 66 cents sounds pretty devilish to me nearly a three percent move to the upside and to the downside you've got mercado libre off 12 bucks 13 bucks nearly about one one percent humana's down eight almost two percent there applied materials is off eight as well that's a 5.6 percent move idex labs down seven one and five percent microsoft's off nearly two percent a seven dollar move there and dolby laboratories down seven bucks nearly eight percent so we got movers and we've got shakers but where do we want to begin well first let's begin here with a couple new profiles that are attempting to form so you can jot these down on your pad of paper those new profiles are coming inside the dow the nq and the russell 2000 now inside the nq we will not have confirmation but this is still telling us where buyers and sellers are lined up at so that much we do know whether these hold throughout the end of the day that i don't know know but we'll certainly know come sunday evening come monday morning when we're back together but right now the new profiles inside the nq tell us that the sellers are residing at 15965 and the buyers are at 555 15712 if we take a look at the dow the sellers are up at 35168 the buyers are down at 34791 now both those profiles formed above prior profiles that's a bullish signal as well from a profile standpoint if we take a look at the russell 2000 you have the same thing however in its case that new profile that is attempting to form just as it was yesterday is below price and that's a bullish message out there when i say below price right now we're trading at 1800 and change and the, the top of that profile which would be resistance typically now that would be support is 1732 out there so that's the first thing that we wanted to share with you what's the second thing we want to share with you that's a great question maybe we go take a look at some intraday charts out here so let's do that give me a second here we'll go over to the white background screens Actually, let's do this. Let's start off with the daily and the weekly. Let's just change screens out here, see what other signals we've got. So we have those new profile levels inside the four equity future contracts. Here you've got both the daily and the weekly. 
We take a look at the ES Mini, and the ES Mini it looks to me like it wants to go target that 4566. If it closes below yesterday's low, we might have a different opinion. That different opinion could be a couple day pullback, and then 4413 or so would be its price target to the downside. But first, we've got to get below yesterday's low we're not even near that at this stage of the game same thing in the nq now the nq at the level that you're watching to the downside out here then there's no topping pattern but we did have price run into resistance which was at a td9 count breakdown level this is a daily time frame 15982 so if we get a close below yesterday's low yesterday's low 15796.75 then we might see a pullback to its oscillator and change line right around the 15 509 area out there again on the weekly charts uh, for the es and the nq nothing bearish about those in fact the es mini says it wants to target well it's trading above profile out there so there's nothing bearish about that it's above a green oscillator and change line in the case of the nq it is trading into a sell zone and that zone is between 15 727 and 16 130 the dow equity future contract prices looks like it's going to close above the top of that profile it just needs to close above 34 473 on a weekly basis that is bullish and the Russell 2000 is getting in on the action and a close today above 17 let me give you that number 177370 will accomplish that task however it still has resistance one more battle overhead and that's the top of that weekly profile which it found resistance at that is at the 181490 level out there the actual high for the week has been 1838 1838 so you know within three bucks uh, to the daily time frames for the Dow equity future contract again it would have to close below at least yesterday's low to even signal the possibility of a couple day pullback out there otherwise it wants to go target its td9 count breakdown level and that's up at the 35 357 area in the case of the russell 2000 we did get two consecutive closes above its td9 count breakout area that's at the 1800.9 level you still love to see price close above it it's trading right in there right now it did close below it yesterday it just might have been a one day wonder to the downside we take a look at the russell 2000 all right so now let's go take a look at some intraday charts for the equity future contracts out here let's begin by looking at the nq what do we see out here well one we see a number of different tops if we take a look at just the top row out here and that would include the daily the five hour the four hour and the two hour each of them have well not each of them the daily does not have a top but the five hour td9 count top that says the key level of resistance out here on a five hour basis up at the 16 04950 level. Any close above that will negate that top. It'll negate the top in the 240. Will negate the top inside the 120 minute chart. To the downside, the key support level that's been tested several times here and is held. So this would be a clue for anybody. Would be at the 15822 mark out there. So I still say you need to see a close below yesterday's low out there to suggest there may be trouble in uh, River City or really just to pull back to that new profile support, assuming that it confirms or completes. And that's around that 15, 7, 12 level out there. Um, I don't really think there's anything else worthwhile to spend time on here when I take a look at these intraday charts. Let's fire up the ES Mini. Go see what it is signaling to you and I out there. It may have a different message. So in a moment, those charts will be up on our screen. Of course, we're going to be going to break in about two seconds or so. Let's just see if we get this to fire up. So we're still looking at yesterday's low. I don't know if the man yeah, it's got to still get on. Yeah, it's got a uh, yesterday's low key area out there to be watching during the day. Forty five oh one seventy five. We don't breach that. This bullish trend with price wanting to move higher should remain in effect. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe, which is why it's a great time to try out Teddy Kegstat's Tiger Forex report. Teddy Kegstat breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30 plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, dollar yen as well as many more and he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30-year t-bonds as they both influence forex markets tremendously 
When you sign up for the Tiger Forex Report, you also gain instant access to Teddy's 60-minute webinar archive he just hosted, Forex Strategies and Fundamentals, What is Behind the Tiger Forex Report. For all the details and to start your 30-day Tiger Forex Report subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn. And he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters Letters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, uh, folks. Let's um, let's do uh, the following. Let's go take a look at some requests that have uh, come in. So let's start with the first one. First one coming in from Nancy. Nancy wants to take a look at Microsoft. So what do we know about Microsoft? Microsoft has got an A to B equals CD pattern to the upside. We can draw that in there. I'll just draw in the A to B line, then we'll just move that over. This is an extension, so this has done more than a one-to-one -one A to B equals CD. So at day's end, if we get a bearish reversal candle, I'm going to put in the larger A to B equals CD pattern out here. There we go. So you can see that. Well, now you'll see it. It's made more than the one to one move. Now, right now, what we've got going for us is a bear sash candle. So in the case of Microsoft, Nancy, this could be confirming at day's end. Don't know whether it will or won't. It's going to be not about 1119 in the morning, more about 4 p.m. But if it does generate and complete that bear sash candle or a bearish reversal candle at day's end, you'll have a sell the D point pattern. Now, there's also a new profile that is forming here in Microsoft that is bullish in structure. So the pullback would be towards the 365, 366 area, 365, 16 and 366, 76 if we want to get granular on that. Resistance is up at the 374, 75 level. On a weekly time frame, you need a bearish reversal candidate confirm a road momentum indicator top we don't see that on a monthly basis so you're you're bullish on a weekly you're bullish on a monthly maybe we're going to get as a short-term pullback maybe just a couple of days maybe it's just back to that uh, area of uh, support out there so i know you're trading some options out here i would use this and say okay it looks like we might be getting ready for a little change in trend inside of microsoft that could last for a day or two and then you know your price targets to the downside if we look at a 30 minute i'm sorry this is a 15 minute time frame chart road momentum indicator top no bottoming signal suggests it wants to move lower. If we take a look at a 30-minute time frame chart out here, 30-minute time frame chart, we've got the same pattern out there. That suggests it wants to move lower. Now, 361 is the level because price is below profiles on a 30-minute basis. That price could get back to the bottom of that profile is at 365. So I'd say that is the likely target out there, Nancy, to the downside for Microsoft. Hope that information helped you out. Thanks so much for the request. G-Man inside the Tigers then wants to take a look at 
Mars Solar, FSLR is the ticker symbol. As we take a look at it, what is it doing? Well, it formed a nice road momentum indicator bottom. It did that uh, four or five trading sessions ago. It accomplished that task on November 10th. Why did it accomplish it then? Because that was a bullish reversal candle. That was a hammer candle, and that confirmed that bottom pattern. Now price is above the top of its profile. So where is price headed to? Well, what price would like to do is get up to its TD Nine count breakdown resistance level. That's up at the 173.65 area. However, we could easily draw in a consolidation pattern. So what we're going to say here is in order for First Solar to make that move to 173 and change out there, you've got to see a close above the high from October 24th. And that high out there, because that would basically be the top of the consolidation, and that's at 158.61. So even though everything looks really good here, uh, G-Man, you still got to get it close above that prior swing. Otherwise, what you've got is really just a sideways type consolidation. If I draw it in rather quickly out here, it would look something like this. The high is pretty easy to identify, right? So that's pretty easy. I say right. You might say, I don't know what you're talking about, Steve-O. But I'm saying right. So there's your consolidation pattern out here. And a break of that. Sure, you could use and say that uh, it's a consolidation breakout. Instead, what I would do is I'd use as that upper range for that price target, that 173.65 area. Is that a likely outcome? You know, that's a great question. In the case of First Solar, um, here's the issue. The issue is I really can't put in an A to B equals CD pattern. The reason is if you take a look at this, this is what I have to use for my C point, the high of July 28th. I guarantee you that is more than a 0.786 retracement out there. So I'd be pretty disingenuous to draw in an A to B equals CD pattern on the downside and then say to you, hey, you're going to complete a Gartley buy pattern this week because of that bullish engulfing candle. Instead, what I would say for first solar here and make it easier, G-Man, is that we can see that the oscillator and change line has acted as – a resistance level ever since May 12th of this year out there. So a close above 159.73, that's the number today. It'll be different, uh, you know, as price gets there, but you can use that as a guideline. A close above that would be a bullish signal out there. Of course, that would be a bullish signal because we'd also be above the top of that consolidation on the daily time frame. Monthly chart has a TD9 count Rhodes momentum indicator top. And that is taking price back to support. So that supports the idea of the bottom that we see inside the daily. On the weekly, we really don't have a bottom, but that's okay. Um, and so you've come back to support on that monthly chart out there. Now it's all about resistance. And we really identify where that is. So, G-Man, I know that you're short, right? You're, you're short for solar. So you're short for solar. And you've been short. And you've taken some profits. So... I get it, uh, if you, but here's the deal. If you do get a close above the, uh, I'd say, the October 24th high out there, that's what I would use, 158.61, you'd have to question the idea of being short, or that might be just your longer-term position, but just anticipate that you'd see price get up towards that 173.65 level. So I hope that helps you out. At least you know what areas to watch that would say, you know what, maybe being short isn't the best idea. We don't have that as we speak just yet. We take a look at the next request that came in. This is from uh, Rose, who wants to take a look at ARKK, one of Kathy Wood's funds out there. So let's pull the ARKK fund up on our screen out there. And what I did during the break uh, was I went to see, because I actually have the, I used to have, all of the ARK charts with their holdings so they could easily go back. But first, let's just take a look at ARKK. In the case of ARKK, what do we know? We know there's an A to B equals CD pattern to the upside, has it, uh, has it occurred with volume? Well, the swing point would be November 8th, 18 million shares there, and that 18 million shares was passed with 25 million shares. So there's an A to B equals CD to the upside. We'll draw in the A to B line out there, and then we're going to go ahead and take that A to B, and we're going to move it down to the C point. And so the one-to-one -one on ARC, let's pull this down just a tad, is going to get us above its TD9 count breakdown resistance area, and that would get us in towards the 46 and change level. So it looks to me like what ARK wants to do, ARKK, is make a move to at least 45.16. That's its TD9 count breakdown area. If we look at the weekly time frame chart, it's being supported there. The weekly actually does have a buy the D point pattern. It accomplished that two weeks ago, like many of the indices did. And now you've got price trade above profile resistance. That's at 41.74. A close above that at uh, today's end, uh, Rose, would be a bullish outcome. Now, that's the top of its daily profile, so we'll revert back to that's a pro, that's the top of the weekly profile. Don't worry. I'll spit it out. And that has us reverting back to the daily price target area, 45.16 or higher. 
If we look at that monthly time frame chart for ARC, it's trying to get back inside its profile level. The, the counter trend rally resistance point would be 47.51. So we got 45.16, 46 and change out there. We've got uh, 47.51. Looks like ARKK wants to move to higher ground, but we're not going to stop there. We're going to go take a look at at least those top eight holdings with inside ARKK and see what message they have to us. Now, in order to do that, I need to change screens out here. What I'm showing you is the second eight, although that's not correct because I haven't updated for that eight. But we're going to change our window here. We'll go back to Stevie's main screen out there numero uno screen and here are the eight holdings uh, nancy uh, nancy rose with inside arkk you may not have known that but you should go take a look at that so you can understand what those instruments are doing i didn't i don't know what the weighting is as we speak just yet and what's this telling me here it's telling me i need to take a look at this trip right here. okay we'll come back from this break we're going to go take a look at coin roku tesla zoom path square roblox and CRISPR. Those are the top eight instruments with inside ARKK. We'll be right back. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African RAND, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content stream live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den. Available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no cash or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFM. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, uh, folks. We're taking a look at the uh, top uh, eight weightings with inside of um, 
with inside of ARKK. Let's see, that would be 10, 18, 26, 35, uh, 35, 43, 49. Roblox is another five. That's 54. And CRISPR, that's 58. So 58% of the entire index is in these eight stocks out here. So we take a look at Coinbase. What Coinbase is dealing with here is a resistance level. And that's a TD9 count breakdown here. That's at 95.95. Now, price is trading just above that. It's above profiles, above a green oscillator and change line. There's no topping signal that's in place out here. So Coinbase should make a run for its highs out here from back in uh, July of this year. So that looks still bullish. A uh, Roku uh, looks bullish here. There's no topping signal that I see. It's above profile, green oscillator and change line. Tesla did generate that sell, the D point or Gartley sell pattern yesterday from that bear sash candle so price may be pulling back to test support that'd be a 221.75 zoom has resistance at 64.93 that's a level you'd love to see zm close above because that would then take us to higher highs we take a look at path out here path is also dealing with a td9 count breakdown resistance area that's at 1841 it's also dealing with the td9 count top from back here in the trading day of september 11th now that swing point had volume of 12 million shares as price got into it back on november November 15th, it was with 7 million shares. So you now have a test and rejection of that swing point. You don't really have a top, but you do have a new profile that is formed. And it's above price. So I would watch 1780 first with regard to path. If price closed below that, 1740. And if price got below that, price would move back to its sell or buy zone between 1676 and 1702. And that was on path. Square had formed a TD9 count top two days ago. In order for Square to get bullish, and right now it's neutral because price is above profile and it's above its green oscillator and change line. But in order for it to really get bullish, it needs to close above 57.27 out there. So you'd like to watch that. Roblox, no top in place here. Price remains above its green oscillator and change line. It's even though it's pulled back yesterday and today, it still is bullish. And the same thing with CRISPR. Now, if CRISPR were to generate a bearish reversal candle, not necessarily today that would do that, but if it were, that would then confirm a Rhodes Mintum indicator top. So in summary out here, you've got a top inside of Square, but it's neutral. You do have a top inside of Tesla. Otherwise, the other six holdings, remember, all eight of these are up like 58% or so of the entire index. So I would stay with ARKK. Rose, I hope that helps you out. And thanks so much for the request. Let's go to our next request out here. This is coming from Dan inside the Tiger's Den. And Dan wants to take a look at AQST. Now, I've got to switch panels here. I'm going to do that. Give me a moment. And then we're going to get back to those charts. What's going to show up on your screen first is going to be Goldilocks. But if you give me a moment, we'll get back to ARKK. AR AQST out here. And so AQST, this is an instrument, I think, Dan, you said you're hoping to hold this for years out here. Let's take a look at what it's doing as we speak right now. What it's doing right now, it's taking on a resistance level. Now, resistance level is where price broke down from. And where it broke down from was 179. Now, let me just see, because I may have a little bit of a delay here. AQST. There we go. I just want to see where it's trading. I've got it at buck seventy six. Yeah, buck seventy six, buck seventy five. So, so that's the resistance level right now in a daily time frame that you need to deal with. Now, if this does close above the swing point from the trading session of. 1017, and ideally you'd like to see it do that with more than 340,000 shares, then you'd get an A to B equals CD to the upside. You have another level of resistance above 179, that's at 186. 186 happens to be the weekly TD9 count breakdown resistance level. The monthly chart isn't really helping us. It's helping us from the standpoint of what? It's trading above profile. That's about the best that I can come up with there. It's trading above profile. So right now, at least, on an on a intra period time frame because Dan you're in this for the long haul I'm just going to share with you where those battles are going to be and that first battle again is going to be at a buck 79 that's already been tested rejected a couple times and then above that 186 if you can get above 186 the next battle will be at 207 and 207 is the center of its bearish structured weekly profile if this is only a counter trend move then that's where price would really find resistance at 207. So, Dan, I hope that provided you with the information that you were looking for. Thank you so much for the request. The next request is to take a look at our horizontal trading ranges. 
And that's for Mr. Bill in the den. Now, Mr. Bill, I've only it, it takes up a huge amount of resources on my system, and usually I've got to do a bit of uh, finagling in order to uh, have that really kind of look right, so to speak. But here we're going to give you the Dow and the S&P 500. Now, make sure I'm on the right page. Yep, I am. So, folks, what you're looking at here is you're looking at the weekly chart for the Dow. And these green horizontal lines are what we refer to as a primary trading range by Bud Rolfs or horizontal trading range because I do things just slightly different. Bud always used his eyes. He visually was looking for the largest number of co-located opens and closes. When I say co-located, it doesn't matter whether it's an open or a close. Turns out that you can actually automate that. That's what I've done here. What we can see is that the largest number of co-located opens and closes is all the way back here at 171112. So you have 25 there. Above at 18422, you had 11. And below at 15801, you had 10. So that established our, our horizontal trading range. Once you have that distance, then you just simply are adding to that or subtracting from that to find upside and downside resistance levels. So Mr. Bill, the next upside resistance level, and we can see that that area has been tested 11 times and that has held, or I can say it's held, that is where we've seen an open or a close and that would be at 35,463. And that's using the weekly time frame chart for the Dow. If we go take a look at the S&P 500, in the case of the S&P 500, let's use the daily time frames. Now, these descending and rising uh, price channels that I have out here, that's something that I did a while ago, but I'll leave those in place as we speak right now. And on a daily time frame, so now you understand how horizontal trading ranges are, you have a, a decent idea of how horizontal trading ranges are, are identified. I, I believe I've got a workshop on that. If you are a subscriber to Mastering Probability, you can go take a look at that. In the case of the S&P 500, we're taking a look at both those cases, the cash indices, both the Dow and the S&P 500. What we have is the next horizontal trading range up at 4589. Now, there have been 27 opens and closes up at that level. So that's going to be a fairly decent area of resistance. And if you can get above that, then we're likely going to head up towards this rising price channel. But more importantly, the next horizontal trading range. And Mr. Bill, that next horizontal trading range, about 4589, is up at 4755 out there. That's not the call that we're making right now. But those are your HTRs, your primary trading ranges and their boundary lines. I hope that helps you out. Now, I'm going to go ahead and close these out here just simply to free up the resources because it takes up – takes up quite a bit out there and i uh, don't really need to slow the system down so we won't slow the system down where are we at apogee perigee we got that coming in here pretty soon um man look at how natural gas look at uh how natural gas so we had perigee come in um almost two weeks ago not exactly just yet november the uh, 6th out there and what that does for reasons that i can't share not because i can't share uh because uh because i can't share i have an idea but I'm not going to share that idea because I really can't prove it. What I can prove to you is it really acts as a support or resistance level. And it is a point in time, like to the minute, to the minute. And why it works, man, I don't know. I just know that it does. Take a look at how natural gas at 1130 on November 15th ran right into resistance, the Apogee pivot point at 327. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe, which is why it's a great time to try out Teddy Kegstat's Tiger Forex Report. Teddy Kegstat breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30-plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex Report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, dollar yen as well as many more and he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30-year t-bonds as they both influence forex markets tremendously when you sign up for the tiger forex report you also gain instant access to teddy's 60-minute webinar archive he just hosted forex strategies and fundamentals what is behind the tiger forex report for all the details and to start your 30-day tiger forex report subscription today visit the front page of tfnn.com tfnn educating investors 
everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything, from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. We got the charts for Regions Financial. RF is a ticker symbol up on our screen out here. Looks like it's uh, trying to form an A to B equals CD to the upside. Has it confirmed that pattern? Well, the B point out here is a trading day of November 3rd. This is for Snowball inside the Tigers then. So Snowball, on November 3rd, this generated a volume of 12.9 million shares. When that B point was passed, it was on November 15th. That was 9 million shares. So we got lighter volume so far. Let's see if we even, what did we do yesterday? 9 million shares today. So far, we're 2 million shares. So that's that's even less than 9 million. So that does not mean that it hasn't formed an A to B equal C to the upside. The preference would just simply be to take out that swing point with volume. Nonetheless, you've got an A to B equal C D pattern that is present at the moment. And price is trading above profiles. So let's go try to figure out where that A to B <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> pattern will take us. That eh, didn't copy, but that's okay. So the one-to-one -one level is approximately, don't use this to the T, is right around the 1731-ish area out there. And you can see you've got TD9 count breakdown resistance at 1823. So it looks like that's the uh, target area for Regions Financial. On a weekly basis, this formed a Rhodes Mintum indicator bottom two weeks ago. Now, we can also see that that red horizontal line has been resistance ever since the week of August 18th. We're seeing price close above that level. That is a bullish outcome. And we have not had two candles, two consecutive candles, below that bullish structured profile. So the next battle that you've got, yes, this wants that A to B equals CD, although it hasn't uh, passed that B point with the uh, volume. But the next battleground from a price standpoint is going to be at 1652. And 1652 is a weekly center of its profile. <coughs> Whoa. <coughs> Both buyers and sellers exist there. So that's the next uh, resistance level that you've got. Nothing else that I can see out here for our FY. There's, I, I take that back. Regions Financial on a 30-minute time frame. So this will be as, uh, helpful to you to understand what this is doing today. Of course, I should open up this, the, uh, the chart. So what we can see here is this completed a TD9 count top at 1130. And that TD9 count top high. <coughs> wow. I don't know where that cough is coming from. But if we take a look at it, the TD9 count top is 1635. 
You're trading at you're trading at 1635. You've got basically 15 minutes left in this trading session. So if you see at any point in time on a 30 minute bar, you see a close above that TD9 count high. And again, that number out there is 1635. That's going to tell you that this wants to continue to move higher. You still have a top. Not until resistance is taken out will that change things. That top suggests that what we should see is price pull back to the 1626 area. 1626 is its green now southern change line. If that holds, that would be a bullish or would in this case here would turn the signal to neutral. But if price closes below that, then what we're looking at is move back to the 1604, maybe even 1588 area. So watch that 30-minute time frame chart. That's going to give you clues as to how this is likely to trade for the rest of the day. So thank you so much for the request. Snowball, hope that helped you out. Dan, inside the Tiger said, I want to take a look at GSM. So let's get that up on our screens out here. Go see what GSM is doing. Give me a moment. GSM is... Uh, Ferro Globe and Ferro Globe right now is uh, just consolidating, and I'd have to say it's consolidating with inside his profile between 443 and about the uh, 496 level, 496. But there's additional resistance here, Dan, and that oh, this is the one that you want to hold for years. I apologize, this is the one that you want to hold for years. So on the daily time frame, you've got a TD nine count bottom. On a weekly time frame, you have a TD9 count bottom. On a monthly time frame, on the monthly time frame, that's where it is the fly in your financial ointment. And you'd really love to see on a monthly basis price get back inside his profile, close above the asset and change line. You'd love to see it close above 507. Might even get that. Uh, well, we got the end of the month. It's only the, uh, what is today? The 17th, I think, right? 17th? Yeah. So we got a while before that. All right. So daily, weekly, everything looks pretty good. You'd love the uh, monthly to participate. So you got that nice TD9 count, Rhodes Mintum Indicator bottom. You got both those bottoms. Doesn't make that any better. With your real next battle, top of the profile, we already covered that, and then above that 50, 511 the uh, TD9 count breakdown resistance level. If you can overcome 511, then the next move should take us to 542, 549. 542 is the top of the weekly profile. For 549 is the next TD9 count breakdown level. That's assuming price can get above 511 out there. So that's what I see when I take a look at GSM on a intraday basis. An intraday, I'm talking about a 30-minute time frame chart. I don't see any kind of a top. Looks to me like this wants to rally further. And the reason I say that is because price is trading above a profile. It's trading above its green oscillator and change line. Uh, what it is dealing with, though, it is dealing with a resistance from a 30-minute bar from back at 10, 10 o'clock in the morning, 9.30 to 10. That was on November the 8th. And the volume there was 415 thousand shares out there and this was moving up with 70 so you know what you're running into a swing point with a lot lighter volume it's still inside that swing point if it closes below 491 and that's going to tell us this wants to move lower and 486 is the bottom of that new profile that has formed out here um yeah, so on the, so I, you know, right now price is above support levels. You've just got to watch support on a further move lower, knowing that from an intraday standpoint, price is moving into a swing point with very light volume out there. But otherwise, and and you're now and you're dealing with resistance on the uh, daily time frame as well. So uh, I like the daily and the weekly uh, TD9 count bottoms out there. Now it's all about the battlegrounds out here. So I hope that helps you out, Dan. And best of luck to you. And I hope that we take a look at this. Let's uh, how, how many years you want to hold it? Five years, five years from now. Let's relook at this. Uh, let's do it on, uh, you know, just before Thanksgiving as well. And this thing will be trading at about, what, uh, 150 bucks or so? Uh, that sounds pretty good. All right. So let's uh, look in the reef. What the? Uh, favorite son of old. Target failed on Friday. Uh, yeah. I don't know what that's all about, Dizzle, but uh, so what do we want to take a look at next? Oh, I know, Hector wrote in. He wants to take a look at the GDX. So, you know, for the GDX, he's asking about A to B equals CD pattern. So for that, we're going to go where I've got that A to B equals CD tool, much easier for me to draw it in. And I believe Hector's first question is about a weekly time frame chart. So let's get over and take a look at the black background screen out here. Let's just look at it for the GDX. Let's start with the daily time frame. What do we know about the daily time frame? So the daily time frame for the GDX, 
uh, has an A to B equals CD to the downside. And Hector's question, I think your question, well, let me just, let me let me do this here. Let me dress up the chart just a tad. Let me turn off these trend lines. Just get, okay, I can turn those back on. It'll just make it a little bit easier for us to take a look at. Let's turn off the trend lines out here. Boom, they're gone. So now, <coughs> what we can see here, it's questionable whether this was an A to B equals CD to the downside. Why? The retracement level was 86%. So let's not even say we even have an A to B equals CD pattern because really technically we don't. All we really have is price consolidating with inside its bearish structure daily profile. And the resistance out there is at 28.97 and support is at 27.29. And we turn that trend line back on, we can also see that price is trading in between trend line resistance and trend line support. And that is basically encompassing that daily profile. We come back to this break. Let's take a look at the weekly chart for the GDX. And, uh, and then we'll close out the show. We'll be right back. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. The reality is that navigating financial markets can be risky. Markets can be chaotic and difficult to understand. Having the latest market advice can help you turn this chaos into a key for creating winning trades. At TFNN, we understand that it can be hard to find reliable market news. That's why each of our market experts offers their very own market newsletter. A must-have tool for every trader out there striving to find an edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets so you can analyze the market before you trade. Try any of our great newsletters risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee. Just visit the Newsletters tab on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN. Educating investors. Welcome back, folks. So we're taking a look at the uh, GDX. Right now, what we've established is the GDX is really trading between trend lines as well as its profile levels on the daily time frame. Now, on a weekly basis, you've got to answer this question. The one-to-one -one A to B equals CD price projection was 2543 price back on the week of October 2nd got down to 2562 that seems close enough to me to then call that a completed A to B equals CD because then the following week what it did this was a three river a morning star candle so that is a completed by the D point pattern so we had a completed by the D point pattern with price finding resistance at the center of its profile 2897 
I'd love to say that a close above 2897 will get us up to 3236, but we've seen a couple of different closes above that level, and that hasn't come to fruition. So we won't say that. What we will say, though, is that uh, price is inside the profile level, and it's got support down at the lows from that week of October the 2nd out there. That's down at the 2562 area. On the monthly chart, you also have price running into resistance. That resistance is the top of its profile. So that's another level to be watching. That's up at the 2955 area. If I turn on the trend there, let me see, what do we get? You really get kind of the same type of thing. You do have a rising and a falling trend line out there. Do those usurp the ones that we took a look at on the daily? The one on the daily would be the one that's basically feeding off of the April 1st high and then the high from May the 1st. And then for the larger one, you're dealing with the high from August 1st all the way up to the high from April the 1st out there. So hope that helps you out, uh, Hector and Patty. Thanks much for writing in. Let's close out the show by taking a look at Lightspeed Crew. We're looking at the January contract. That is the active contract right now. We're going to change screens with the white background screen. So on a daily basis, there's native B equals CD to the downside. Needs a bullish reversal candle to complete that pattern. We don't have that just yet. You had a TD9 count bottom that formed earlier this morning on the uh, five-hour time frame chart. And price right now is trading above both profile and its oscillator and change line. And a close above 74.51 at 2 p.m. today is going to suggest we could see light feed crude rally up to 78.69 level. So, folks, thanks so much for joining me uh, on Monday. Please join me between 8 and 9. I'm going to have to record Monday's show between 8 and 9. That way I can go get Granny, my 96-year-old grandmother, and bring her here for Thanksgiving. So have a fantastic Friday, fabulous weekend, and I'll see you bright and early come Monday morning. Take care, folks.